everyone and welcome to this, the newest edition of Book Time with Elvis, with me Mark. And today, uh, as uh, per request of some of you, here's Elvis. Elvis, look at the camera. Look. Yeah. So, uh, I thought I would do this introduction rather than sitting at home. Uh, I would do it uh, out and about as it's a beautiful sunny day. And I thought I would show you a little bit of my town. Behind me you can see this wonderful uh, Renaissance uh, palace. I mean, it's, it's not massively huge, but it's nice enough, that's for sure. Uh, unfortunately, like everything else at the moment, uh, it's closed due to the pandemic. And um, yeah, so I thought uh, for a couple of minutes or so, I'll take you on a little tour of our town and I'll show you the square and things like that. So let's go. So I live here in the town of uh, Novi Mesto Namatui, which is uh, in Eastern Bohemia of the Czech Republic and it is about 15 kilometers from the village you saw in the previous vi uh, video where I work. For those music lovers amongst you, uh, classical music lovers especially, there is this statue of classical Czech composer Bedrich Smetana, who of course was famous for writing the piece Vltava or Moldau in German. Uh, he spent some time living in this town as his, uh, some members of his family worked here. At one point, there was a brewery on this site. Uh, however, it's no longer there. Like many Czech towns, we have uh, a town square, and I think we're blessed with a particularly attractive one. If you can see here, the sun's quite bright. It's quite an unusual square in the sense it's one of the only uh, four-sided covered squares in the Czech Republic and it was built by an Italian Renaissance architect whose name escapes me for the moment. But there you go, this is the main square of Novi Mesto Namatui. And here you can see the old town hall which is now the town museum and also like the town uh, club uh, where they have various cultural events uh, as well as the tourist information officer or office rather sorry and across the square here we have the square church which is very nice and in the middle there is a statue of the town's founder, founder uh, Jan uh, Katsov uh, I think if, I, if memory serves me right is his name <laughs> And here's the uh, back streets of the town, the mean, the mean back streets of Novi Miesto. Um, so basically, in today's episode, I want to talk about the top 20 novels tag that I saw on the Bookish Bryant's channel. Uh, you know, when I was watching that, it was impossible for me not to try and come up with my own list. Um, so that's indeed what I've done. Uh, however, uh, coming up with the list in itself was really difficult. Excuse me, I'm struggling with my mask and a little bit slippery, uh, paving stones because of the frost. Uh, so yeah, I've come up with my own list. Uh, it wasn't an easy task, but, uh, I, can't, I really enjoyed doing it. As I say, especially after seeing, uh, the Bryant's effort. By the way, it's a nice, uh, view of the nature and the river Metui, uh, which of course is in the town's name, Novi Mr. Nad Metui, means new town on the Metui River. So yes, so let's uh, crack on and have a look at that list. Shall we Elvis? So hello again everybody. Ah, gosh, it was pretty cold out there this morning. Uh, so good thing I've come inside to, uh, to do this uh, top 20 uh, books. Uh, I should stress these are the top 20 books at the moment. Perhaps, of course, it could change in time. Um, some of the books are individual books. Uh, others are part of a series. I mean, it's it's very hard uh, to leave out whole series uh, for me anyway. Um, so I wanted to include them. So yeah, I've got 20 books for you. Um, and yeah, just, gosh, trying to get over the cold. I'll just have a quick uh, sip of my tea before I begin. Excuse me. Hmm. Right, so 
they're in no particular order really I suppose uh, I mean for example one and two are quite interchangeable really and um, I didn't know how to rank them uh, exactly so for example 20 on the list isn't uh, isn't the worst one uh, of, of the of the 20 uh, it's it's really difficult to do so uh, exactly and say um, you know there's not much there's not much between them really so the 20 books that I uh, love best certainly at this moment in time uh, would start with number 20 which I suppose would be a good way to a good place to start I would have to go with the Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Now, I really uh, enjoyed this book as a small child. Um, when I started reading it, um, actually, I read one of those Ladybird uh, abridged versions, uh, and that kind of got me interested in it. And I also had, I think, an uh, audio cassette tape that went with it, and it was, uh, it was really well done and a lot of fun. Uh, so probably when I got into my uh, teenage years, I was able to read the uh, uh, read the whole book uh, for the first time and thoroughly enjoyed it. Great characters. I love uh, Professor Challenger. I'm sure all of you are aware of the of the story of um, these uh, uh, Edwardian uh, adventurers heading off to South America uh, and then finding this lost world where dinosaurs still exist and uh, cavemen are coexisting. Uh, with them so perhaps uh, it's unrealistic but it's a lot of fun and as I say the characters are, are really uh, fantastic in it. Um, is it Lord John Roxburgh I think is, is, is one of them. Uh, he's great and yeah Professor Challenger though he's, he's, at, he's my absolute favourite when it comes to that. Most of these pictures are uh, from the electronic versions because uh, as I mentioned in my newbie video I do not have my entire uh, library um, with me. Uh, number 19 on the list is the book Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Um, really enjoyed this book. Uh, very nicely written. I quite like his books. Uh, I'm not a mega fan but uh, probably this was my favourite one that he did. It's not a very big read but the best way to describe it I suppose would be a, a fairy tale uh, for adults um, you know, it's set, uh, set in the Victorian era. Um, there's a kind of, yeah, love story, magical creatures, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and the film, I thought the film wasn't that bad either, actually. And certainly you get to see Robert De Niro in that film, uh, doing something you wouldn't expect, uh, Robert De Niro to be doing, but I won't, I won't spoil anything. But if you, if you like a kind of, uh, fairy tale, um, that's, uh, aimed at adults, I would say, Give Stardust, give Stardust a go. So that was number 19. Moving on to number uh, 18, I will go with Fatherland by Robert Harris. I really like uh, Robert Harris's books. Uh, Fatherland was the first one I read. Uh, I think I was around 14 and I, I read it on holiday. Um, it's the story of a murder and conspiracy all set in an alternative history, or alternate history rather, where Germany had won the war and I think it's in the lead up to uh, Hitler's uh, birthday, it might have been 70th birthday, 75th birthday, something like that, and it's set in the 1960s but in a, in a, in a Germany and Europe really that's still uh, controlled by the Nazis. It's very exciting, something very different. Uh, I think at the time, uh, you know, it was fairly, you know, fairly new thing. Uh, so I would, I would definitely recommend you to try Fatherland uh, if you fancy something uh, different and exciting. Uh, moving on to number uh, seventeen, it's another Robert Harris, a more recent one. It's called uh, An Officer and a Spy, and it's a an historical. A fiction book about the uh, Dreyfus affair in France at the end of the 19th century uh, where this uh, Jewish officer in the French army was accused of spying uh, for Germany and uh, it was kind of a conspiracy against him and he was uh, shamed, humiliated and sent off to an island prison in the French Caribbean uh, I suppose maybe something like Devil's Island in, in, in the book Papillon um, 
and uh, the the book is really about the the struggle to prove his innocence, I suppose, and and kind of rehabilitate him. But it's it's very interesting, very well done. And I think uh, last year or maybe a couple of years ago, I I don't remember. They did make a film, a French language film, uh, about it called uh, Jacques, uh, because of course that's where the uh, expression uh, you know Jacques comes from when uh, Emile Zola. Uh, wrote this uh, ac- accusation, uh, accuser, accusatory uh, letter in the French newspapers on behalf of uh, Monsieur Dreyfus. Uh, going up the list now to number 16, uh, it's the first, I guess, of the series that I want to uh, mention, and that is the Asian Saga series by James Clavell, and the picture here features the first book in the series, uh, Shogun. Love this uh, series. Um, I actually started reading it when I was uh, a young English teacher in my first uh, job uh, in Japan, almost, what is it, 16, 17 uh, years ago. Read right through it uh, and then moved on to the other books in the series. I I lent them out to other uh, expats who were living uh, in my town at the time and we all really enjoyed them. Um, the kind of follow, I think it doesn't really matter what order you read them in because uh, a lot of these books, they're separated by quite large, uh, time spans. Um, so you have like Shogun, which is set in the, the 17th century, Japan in the 17th century. Um, Taipan, I think is book two, which is set in uh, 19th century and about the, the foundation of Hong Kong before going back to Japan in the third book, Gaijin. Uh, which is about the clash of east and west uh, in Japan at the um, at the end of the uh, end of the nineteenth century, and then uh, I think it moves on uh, even more into the uh, Second World War with uh, King Rat, and then um, and on to Noble House in the uh, takes place in Hong Kong during the nineteen sixties, and uh, the final book Whirlwind. Uh, which uh, occurs during the uh, Iranian Revolution of 1979. The next on the list is another series. I'm sure you've uh, become accustomed to actually there being a lot of series now on this list. And I'll call it the Honor series. And this is the first book, Spies Honor, by Gavin Lyle. Very good fun um, series The set uh, prior to the... Uh, outbreak of the First World War, uh, very much in the vein of someone like John Buchan and his 39 Steps or the Green Mantle series. Uh, yeah, kind of, I, I don't like to say boys own stuff because it does seem like it would limit uh, female uh, fans, but I don't think that's true. There are, there, there is a very good female character in it actually, who's a, who's an American spy. Um, the two main characters, or three main characters, say the American spy woman, but the, uh, the, the main character is, uh, is an uh, aristocratic uh, British uh, army officer who's fallen on hard times, and uh, it all follows kind of like the early days of the British uh, Secret Service, but there's a lot of comedy and, and kind of adventure stuff in there, so I, I would really recommend it to anyone who likes that kind of thing. Uh, next on the list is another series, and it is the... Jeeves and Worcester series by P.G. Woodhouse. I was a late comer to these. I only started reading them uh, last year and love them. Extremely funny. Uh, even today, all these years after they were first published, uh, they are set uh, mostly during the 1920s and uh, 30s and uh, follow uh, the adventures of uh, uh, Bertie Worcester, another uh, aristocratic uh, figure who... Uh, doesn't really work and he spends a lot of his time just getting into trouble and his butler Jeeves who spends most of his time getting uh, Worcester out of trouble. Oh, excuse me. So next on our list is a book that is part of a series but I haven't read the series. I've read only the first book and that's The Shadow of the Wind. Fantastic book. Um haunting, beautiful, uh, romantic, uh, just just really wonderful book. I read that uh, last year and uh, it certainly stayed with me. 
a story of a father and son who run a bookshop in Barcelona. And um, it's, I think, in the aftermath of the Spanish Civil War. And um, the boy comes across a, a book uh, with a mysterious background, a mysterious history, especially behind the life of the author of that particular book. And he sets out to find out as much information as he can. Really good. Thoroughly recommended. Got a historical fiction uh, series next, which is uh, Con Igledon's The Wars of the Roses series. Uh, if you like history, if you like English history, uh, there's no denying The Wars of the Roses is a very dramatic part of English history. These novels are great. They basically teach you the entire history of The Wars of the Roses uh, in, in novel form. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I know there's a lot of things um, that he... Um, you know, condenses or changes slightly, but I would say it's quite accurate uh, for a novel, especially. He's written books, I know, on Genghis Khan and uh, I think Caesar, certainly on the Roman Empire, but I've yet to read those. Uh, moving up our list, uh, come to a, yet another series, and this time um, a series that was originally written in Russian, and it's the Night Watch series by Sergei Lukyanenko. And uh, I think there are six of these books now. Though originally it started out as a uh, as a trilogy. Uh, I've read all of them. I really like them. Uh, fantasy isn't my usual thing, actually, but this this was just something else, really. Um, mostly set in uh, Russia, specifically uh, Moscow, and it follows uh, so-called others. These are people who have uh, magical or supernatural abilities. And there are dark others and light others. And basically they came to an agreement many centuries ago. And uh, in the Night Watch, it follows the light others who have to patrol the streets of Moscow at night, uh, ensuring that the dark others stick to the treaty. And then we look at it in, in the second book, I think it's uh, the Day Watch, and it follows then the dark others, uh, making sure that the light others stick to their terms of the treaty. It includes things like... Uh, vampires, for example, need a license to hunt. Uh, you're only al allowed to use certain amounts of magic at a time and this kind of stuff. But it's really, really well done. If you like uh, fantasy and want to try something different, uh, I would recommend checking out the Night Watch series. Uh, I've got a trilogy next, and it's the Carla trilogy by John le Carrier, who sadly passed away. And it was uh, his passing, actually, that uh, uh, got me to read it finally. I think he passed away at the beginning of this year, was it? Or the just the tail end of last year. Um, I've read the first two books. The last book I haven't read yet, but I've been assured it's great. And I'm pretty certain it will be. Uh, because the first book, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy. And the second book, The Honourable Schoolboy, were fantastic. Excellent Cold War, um, Cold War uh, espionage uh, books, really. And... Um, you know, I'd seen, when I was young, the old BBC uh, adaptation of Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, with Alec Guinness as the main character, George Smiley. So I know I knew what happened in the end of that before I read the book, but I have to say it didn't spoil it at all. It was really, uh, really excellent. Another favourite series of mine is the Station series, or the John Russell and Effie Kernan series. Uh, this is by David Downing, and uh, this series... Uh, is, every book in this series is named after a particular train station and it's set, or it starts rather, uh, just before the Second World War and carries on through to the early days of the Cold War. Follows the adventures of John Russell, who's an Anglo-American uh, reporter uh, who actually fought for Britain during the First World War. Uh, he has a, a son and, a, and an ex-wife who lives in Berlin and his girlfriend is this Effie Kernan who is a uh, a famous film star. It's just very atmospheric. It takes you around Berlin and other places in great detail. And the stories themselves are really exciting. I, I definitely recommend you check them out if you get the chance. If you want something light-hearted and fun, uh, you could try the Portuguese Irregular Verbs uh, series or the Professor Dr. Von Eagelfeld Entertainment series by Alexander McCall Smith. Uh, there are at the moment four books, I think, and the fifth one is due out soon. Um, they are not really novels. They are 
kind of each book is a collection, if you like, of three or four short stories. They're very thin, but they're a lot of fun. Uh, they're a satirical look at the world of academia, especially in Germany, and the uh, competition between the, the, the main character, Prof Professor Dr. Von Eagelfeld. As I said, if you want something light and fun to read uh, when you're in a reading slump, do check out um, Portuguese Irregular Verbs and the other books uh, by Alexander McCall Smith. And also his other works, uh, number one, Ladies Detective Agency, 44 Scotland Street. They're just, you know, cosy, uh, funny books, uh, well worth, uh, well worth reading. Next is the series, uh, Aubrey Maturin series. Um, probably you've seen the film Master and Commander, excellent film. Books are amazing, um, though I've only... I've only, I'm only up to number six though, so, uh, but everyone says they're, they're really fantastic. So I will include the whole series because I'm sure after six books I can tell that I'm going to love it. Uh, 21 in the series and um, they follow the uh, nautical adventures of um, Royal Naval Captain uh, Jack Aubrey and his friend and ship surgeon Stephen Maturin uh, who moonlights... Uh, in espionage, uh, set during the Napoleonic Wars, kind of like a maybe a Jane Austen goes to sea. You know, very entertaining books, um, filled with lots of nautical uh, knowledge, but also uh, just the um, the banter, if you like, between the characters is is great. Um, yeah, I really really enjoy even just the conversations uh, that occur between the two main characters. Very very good. Next is another historical novel uh, series, the Shard Lake series set in uh, Tudor, England. Uh, this is the first book, Dissolution. Uh, they take place at first during the uh, latter years of the reign of King Henry VIII and follow the um, adventures, if you like, of, of Matthew Shard Lake, who is a lawyer uh, based in London. Uh, he has a deformity, he's, uh, he's hunchbacked, and this kind of causes him trouble from time to time, but he gets involved with some powerful friends and also makes some powerful enemies. And uh, they're excellent, you know, big books, but uh, big and absorbing stories and excellent mysteries. So if you get a chance, check out the Shard Lake series by CJ uh, Sansom. Finally, another book that actually stands on its own, and that's The New Confessions by William Boyd. Uh, it is a satire, if you like, or parody of the Confessions by French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and uh, it follows the, it's, it's written as a kind of fake memoir of a man born at the end of the 19th century, and he is, uh, he lives through all the great events of the 20th century, and he's always on the cusp of greatness, but life kind of kicks him down, but he finds a way to pick himself up again. Uh, it's a really epic novel, in fact, on the front here it says, Brilliant, a Citizen Kane of a Novel. Um, and yeah, I would say that's true. It's very epic, excellent, entertaining read. Okay, so moving on to number four. Uh, it's the novel The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. There is a sequel to this, which I haven't read. Uh, however, I think this works fine as a standalone book. Uh, it follows the uh, life of PK, a young uh, white British South African boy uh, during the uh, 1930s, 40s and 50s and um, the early years of, of apartheid and uh, he has a very hard life because he's, he's an orphan uh, and he becomes involved in the anti-apartheid movement uh, and it's extremely moving, very well written book though, really recommend it to you. Number three doesn't need much in terms of a long explanation. Uh, it's The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexand Alexandre Dumas. Fantastic book. I'm sure most of you have probably already read it. Somebody said the other day it's like the blueprint of all revenge stories, and I think that's true. Um, massive book, but massive story. If you haven't read it, you should definitely uh, do so. Okay. Now, the last two books I do actually have 
uh, which is good, I suppose, as they're uh, among uh, the best ones. Um, I said the other day this book was probably my favourite of all time, but on reflection, it has moved down to number two, though. As I said, this list isn't really in uh, particular order. And that is The Fantastic Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. I've loved this book my entire life, um, and I read it still uh, almost uh, you know, every year, and I have multiple copies of it, though this is the only one I've got with me uh, at the moment. Um, absolutely love the character of Long John Silver. Um, I think part of that does come down to the film version from 1950 and the portrayal of the character by Robert Newton. I find myself reading it to Elvis on occasion using Newton's voice, uh, which I probably became the, the blueprint of all pirate voices after that. You know, the, the whole, ahar, Jim, you know, shiver me timbers and all that stuff. Um, yeah, excellent book. Please read it if you haven't done so. And lastly, my number one is, again, another book I've loved my whole life. The copy I've got is pretty uh, old and I've probably had it many years. And it's Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. Fantastic comic um, uh, piece of comedy. Uh, follows the misadventures of three men. And uh, to say nothing of the dog, the fox terrier, Montmorency, uh, as they go on a holiday uh, down the Thames in the late years of the uh, 19th century. Although it was written then, I don't think it's really aged. It's still as funny now as it's ever been. And there's a lot of just fun stories and uh, experiences written within this great novel. Read it. Definitely read it. I love it so much that I'm even going to try someday soon, I hope, to read it in Czech as a challenge to motivate myself. There we are. So it's been a long video. Thank you for sticking with me. Uh, thank you uh, also for watching the introduction. I hope you enjoyed seeing a bit of uh, the place I live, the town I live in. Um, it's nice to kind of share these things with people. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all next time. Please do stay safe and sound and stay healthy and see you soon. All the best. Bye bye.